and we started talking about leveraging and using life insurance, you know, with the living benefits. So, the, so, so that's basically uh, leading me to 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 want to know about retirement planning, you okay. know, and um, how can I use life insurance for retirement planning? Um, you know, I I I, I think there's you know w- one way you, you've mentioned to me before is something called premium financing, and then another program which is OPM. Um, you know, so just on a general level before we go into the uh, premium financing or OPM without that, um, you know, would you use whole life or index universal more for the retirement planning? And, you know, what, what would that look like for somebody potentially? Well, generally if if it's a uh, supplemental retirement plan, you know, which is meant to run alongside what you have got going on now, I've always looked at RUL for that only because, you know, it's kind of like, you know, that's for that. You're not using it throughout your working years. It's designed for, down the road and they right. have a, a, a you know a two percent advantage uh two percent per year advantage over the best whole life in the last 20 years and that might change but you know because it's not got a cap at four percent it's really got a, you know it's, it's in the market but protected against loss so if i'm looking at designing an iul for somebody as, as sometimes it's just their only retirement but let's say it's a supplemental retirement plan um they're paying the premium every year. And let's just take a typical 45 year old business owner to 65. So let's take a general retirement age. So 20 years, they're funding it. Let's just call it 20,000 a year, for example. Sounds like a lot of money, but they started 45. Um, right. So they're putting in $400,000 of their own money over that time period, buying and securing a good death benefit. But at the same time, they're looking at about a 50, 60, $70,000 a year tax-free income every year on top of what else they have got going on in their life. Now, they've got nothing else happening, no 401k, no SEP, no market investments, and they've got a lot of debt. We might have to get them into an infinite banking program quickly and get the debt gone in five years. And at 50, plug a lot more money in. Again, it's a it's a case design that's customized on each and every person. Um, but I would generally go with an IUL in, in most cases, if it's for retirement mm-hmm. planning and it's, it's self-funded by them understand so now let's go ahead and talk about a little bit if you could explain premium financing and you know who's that for and what's that all about well premium finance has been around for decades but the only problem in the past was that it was the one to two percent of the country could afford it you had to show a net worth of say five million back then to cut out of all you have to have savings 250 minimum earnings so it kind of ruled out almost everybody really and those people already had money but over the last five six ten years or so they've kind of like leveled the playing field where you can now have what I call entry level premium financing. Um, the household income requirements are much lower. You don't have to show a high net worth. You have to have some liquid, but it's not like astronomical amounts of money. But you, I'll give you an example. Let's say go back to a 45 year old individual that's kind of behind the eight ball as far as their retirement account. No one's done a projection for them, but well, we do. And I come up with a plan where like, for the next five years, you're going to put $30,000 a year into this plan. You have to find the money. Here's why. Mm-hmm. You're putting 150 in, but the premium financing bank are going to put 600 in or 750. Wait, well, wait. Why, why take, a sec back. Take, take a sec just for, for our audience that don't even know what is premium financing. Sure. What is it, though? Like just basically well, it's, what it's, is premium financing and then continue. Yeah, it's, it's premium financing is like you're qualifying for financing from the bank to fund your insurance policy. Basically, that's it in this instance. I mean, there's other, other usages, but for what we do, it's funding your life insurance policy. You're only coming up with a quarter of the premiums. You're paid into a smaller okay. window, but you want to get the money in quickly because then you let it grow. So you get to enjoy all the growth on the bank money for the next 20 years, okay, and the money you put in, and it only costs you a fraction of the cost. So you're getting kind so, of like... So you're telling me I can a bank will fund my life insurance policy. Is that what you're saying? Yes. If I qualify, I can actually have a fund. Do do they match me or do they, how much more? I mean, what what do they, how do they do it? Talk about match. So most times if you're in a uh, a 401k with your employer, you're getting a match. It's usually a percentage of what you're, you're putting in. So if you put in five grand a year, they're going to put in a thousand too. sometimes a bit more. I mean, Mm -hmm. that works great as a match. If you're going to max it out, like if you're putting $24,000 a year in it, you can afford that. And the company's putting 24, that's fantastic. But with premium financing on a match level, if I'm putting 25 in, the bank's putting in 100, it's a four to one match in my favor. (laughs) What's the bank getting in return? 
Okay, the bank have got interest accruing just like they do with anything else. And you've got to pay the bank back by the 15th, 16th year with interest. Now, what, okay. why, can, why do banks wait that long? You've got to understand a little bit how banks make money. They've already lent that same money out several times, making car, car home, boat, uh, business loan. Life insurance is safe. They know that the death benefit's there. They know that you've got cash value, you've got skin in the game. So even though you're only so putting in- collateral. Yeah, even though you only put in $25,000, say this one year, the death benefits are a million dollars from day one. The bank can put a hundred grand in if you die, they're getting a hundred grand plus interest before you, your, your family get anything else. And by the way, you, you put $25,000 in and the death benefits are a million and you did die prematurely, you've got 900 grand, 800 grand going to the family. That's the important right. part that we tend to overlook. What's in it for me? Well, I'll trade twenty five for eight hundred or nine hundred thousand dollars any day. Yeah, and that's if it happens. So that's it's protected along the way. But let's say you've funded it now for five years. I'm using five years as an example. You can do ten, but let's just use a five year premium financing example. I put one fifty in, the bank put seven fifty in. You know, that's eight hundred thousand, nine hundred thousand dollars total. That's accumulate growth compounding. You know, so now you have two options in the fifteenth year. You borrow money from the policy to pay the bank back, which you can do. I don't like that option. Right. I'm going to use my own private, my own 401k money, if not, not for me personally, my side fund, whether I sell my house, the kids are left home. And here's why. I clear the bank loan, but I've got all that growth going on and on and on. And at 65 years old, in this particular example, I can pull $175,000 a year tax-free income for the rest of my what? life. And I only put $175,000 tax-free income in this example? For the rest of my life. Wow. I, I put 150 wow. in. I put $150,000 in. Yeah, I paid the loan back. So that, uh -huh. that's got to come into consideration too. Let's say you didn't pay the loan back out of your own private funds. You took a loan from the policy and it, you yeah. paid the bank back. You still can pull $87,000 a year projected tax free income. And you only put 150 wow. in. So you've got, to, you've got to design it with the client in mind. Let's look ahead where your funds are now. and and let's just pick which way you and want. And we to can help clients put this together if they qualify. Absolutely, it's a little bit more, you know, hard to qualify with premium financing. There are some, you know, requirements and some hoops to jump through. But at least look at the option. And if I see that you qualify, I'll, I'll know from from day one. I'm going to recommend looking at it. So we have the self-funded IUL or whole life, depending on the situation, premium financing option, and of course we're going to go on to the third one. But they're all better than having a term. For right, sure. right. So the third one is going to be what we call what you, you've uh, coined as OPM, other people's money. And so tell me, let's talk about that. And what's the difference between that and premium financing? And just go ahead and elaborate on that one for us. The difference between the OPM that we, we use or um, the, the premium financing, and there's, there's no bank involved from day one. So there's no requirements. Now, there's a certain there's a certain, uh, you know, I'd say probably $100,000 a year household income will be the minimum requirement, but that most people can achieve that. And so this is a minimum um, you know, premium. But in the OPM structure, in this particular instance, we are using whole life for this because of the guarantees. So okay. let's say, for example, I'll just give you a case just closed this morning. Um, mm -hmm. She was she, you know, quite a higher, bit, higher income. So it was a $100,000 premium. Like, oh, $100,000 a year? Well, technically, yes, but... In this particular case, you only pay the first year's premium. Every subsequent year after that is going to be funded, lent to you by the bank. Again, you've got to understand how banks make money because why would the bank do that? They're not lending to you. They understand the power and importance of life insurance, especially high cash value. They're lending it against the cash value collateral in that policy and then the guaranteed death benefit. Now, you'll sign some paperwork you know, towards the end of the first year that you won't cancel the policy. And if you do, the bank gets paid first. If you die, bank gets paid first. Just like your home, banks get paid first. This is the same concept now. You're using the power of other people's money, the bank money, like they do, to fund mm -hmm. not only a higher guaranteed life insurance for the rest of your life, but in this particular case, this 45-year-old, she's 47, sorry, at age 65, it's showing a $77,000 a year tax-free income for the rest of her life. Wow. Now, remember, she only put truly one premium. So it's not five years, it's not 20 years, it's one year. But maximize that premium. If you haven't got the money somewhere, find it If you for this plan because it's the best thing I've seen in a decade doing this. I think everybody who has the funds now and has a should you know should look at it at least. And I, my job is to present self-funded premium financing and OPM in every single instance, all my clients. That's my, that's my obligation to do that. 
um, and show them how to fund that, whether it's over the next year or so, but you've got to get it in because then you're, you're kind of one and done, a true set it and forget it, another addition inside your overall portfolio. And, and think about this, if you're a, a young 40 year old and you, you qualify for a $30,000 premium, you put it in your, your, your premium first year is your responsibility. The next 25 years, it's kind of lent to you. So it doesn't show a high cash value of it as if it was your own money because you've got to take the bank money, the bank loans into consideration. But you've got another income stream at 65 that wasn't there. You're not trying to find the $25,000 every year. Let's face it with you. The two detriments that stop people doing that is the they owe too much money and they've got a comfortable lifestyle. So I can't put 25 grand a year into a plan. But if you can do one year and borrow the rest, and then at age 65, you're looking at $50,000 a year tax-free income. I mean, you have to look at that, um, you know, product concept, if you will. And if it's a yeah, fit for yeah. you, my job is, listen, I've done the due diligence on this for the last year and a half. This is something that you should at least look at. Use exactly. the power of OPM. That's how banks make money. That's what's the number one profitable industry on the planet is the borrowing or usage, sorry, of other people's money. Banks do it every day. Nice, nice. Um, just a, a few more things. Um, uh, as far as um, folks that are looking to protect their assets with a trust, um, you know, how does a trust coincide or work with a life insurance policy? Can you, can you, um, you know, can you just talk about, you know, tying it together, a life insurance policy and a trust? Um, I think it's important to have a trust, especially if you have assets, you have life insurance, because People, unlike a will, you know, that can be contested, a will is private, uh, sorry, a will is public record. You got to involve a judge, an attorney, usually probate. When it's structured with a trust, me or you, you've wrote the trust out how you want this house um, divided, how you want your jewelry, your watch, you know, who goes to. Life insurance, I want to go into, rather than people spend the money, because you get a lot of money, like people spend it. You want right. to be last forever. You have a trust set up where my kids are going to get ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars a year that lasts the rest of their lives. You know, you can structure it in so many different ways. It's private, private, so there's no probate, there's no public record, there's no attorney or judge involved. There's so many advantages to having a living trust versus not having one. And then there's also the irrevocable and revocable. Again, we can spend another day on this topic. I'm not an attorney. I just I bring it to the attention of my clients that you maybe want to talk to our team about this, the living trust side of, of the equation. But I think in most cases, if you own a home, you have children, you have any assets, life insurance, you might want to look at setting up a living trust. And it's so okay. inexpensive nowadays because it's online compared to the old days. Oh, I'm going to go to the attorney. It's going to cost me 3000 No, everyone puts it off. There's no excuse anymore. So at your fingertips, we can send you the link, fill it, fill it out in your own time, talk to your attorneys online and set it up. Excellent. Excellent. I think that's uh, I think we're kind of coming to the end here, Mark. Um, just uh, just uh, generally speaking, um, you know, if you're if you're speaking to, uh, you know, an audience of people um, coming from all different backgrounds, uh, different belief systems, different economic levels, ages, you know, what's I, I, you know, what would you want to just share from your heart in your experience and wisdom that you'd like to kind of just, you know, share with the audience? Yeah, I mean, especially living in America, it's kind of a lifestyle addiction. That's the title of a of, of book I've been starting and writing for many years. It's basically like, you know, knowing knowing your your, um, your portfolio, really. We, we, all, we all want to create one. You know, we all want financial freedom. You know, when some big NBA or NFL star signs that contract, I have financial security for my family. That's what we all want. The, the problem, what we face every day, is that we're led down that path, if you will, to borrow, borrow, borrow. And that's the largest detriment that stops you from building a platform or a foundation financial security. So I would say like, you know, just talk with an advisor, a good advisor in your area that has got some experience with infinite banking and eliminating the debt. Cause that debt was a debt's gone away. I mean, think about it. if you're making $10,000 a month, you have no mortgage, no, no interest payments, no car payments, no credit cards. You sometimes what most people, oh, I don't know what to do because you've got too much money now to spare. So then you create a plan to build financial security. If we, if we teach this in college, how many people will be at the workspace by age 40? Voluntarily, oh, I've got a plan, I can turn the income on. A, we eliminate um, unemployment, 
right? We educate and we have people in the workforce all the time because now the new retirement age is not 65, 70. And don't get me wrong, our clients never want to stop working. They love what they do. So, but if we created a whole world of 40 year olds that they're all retired, they've got things to do, golf, tennis, croquet, fishing, vacation, you know, everyone's got the lifestyle. That would be, a, a, I think, a great world to live in, personally. You know, I wish I could, not so much retire, get, let's take that back. But financial security, you have the option to walk away on your terms when you want. What's holding you back? It's the amount of debt that you owe. It's the amount of commitment you have you know, to lifestyle. And you have no uh, platform for creating passive residual income. Got to create that. So the earlier, the better. Don't put it off till tomorrow because tomorrow never comes. That's it, guys. Don't put it off until tomorrow. Um, so again, guys, please make sure you like, you subscribe, and share the content. Uh, in the description, you're going to see the, the link to uh, schedule for a free consultation. Uh, it's the markanthonygroup.com forward slash Seb. And uh, Mark and I will be happy to uh, connect and coordinate that with you. We have a team behind us and uh, we work with several carriers. So we're going to put together a strategy that makes sense for you based on all these unique concepts. Um, you know what? One more thing, uh, Mark. You know, if I'm if I'm looking and thinking about if I watch this video, I'm like, oh, this is really interesting stuff here why wouldn't i just go ahead and call a carrier directly and you know or you know i i see ads on tv and and you know my my bank even sends me promotions for life insurance what's the difference why can't i just wouldn't i just be able to do the same thing with anyone well, or the, you gotta remember infinite banking is a concept insurance mm -hmm. carriers to sell life insurance how much do you want to put in each month you know here's your death benefit like if you look on tv on you see all these different uh, now companies popping up on Facebook and LinkedIn on mm -hmm. TV. They're basically just trying to sell you a term to start with anyway, because that's the most profitable, you know, insurance for them because we outlive them or you cancel. Right. Them. Um, mm -hmm. If you want advice on, you know, plugging life insurance into your portfolio the correct way, that's planning. That's not what insurance mm -hmm. carriers do. How much is your premium? How much, how much can you afford? Let's do, do a rating. Let's do an exam. Here you go on your way. They don't hire internal planners because you'd have to pay them a lot of money, you know? Um, and then again, sometimes you're inquiring about a specific plan. It's a high premium. They might just pass on to an advisor in your area that is qualified and they want to work with good qualified insurance advisors, of course, and then let them do their job, him or, him or her. But generally the concepts outside premium financing, OPM, infinite banking are concepts that just using the power of life insurance together to, to make it work insurance carriers have, to this date have, have not yet got their own team doing that they may change hey they might hire so this could be done wrong <laughs> though so so like if i'm speaking to the wrong person and i'm asking them oh hey i want to you know set up this uh, premium financing or this infinite banking you know is you know is everyone going to do the same job or no and i'll give you an example i've got a client right now i'm working with um, in another state that they had whole life for the husband and wife and the three children and the total premium for the year was 5,000 and they make 250 a year. It's not going to do its job. I'll go back to that statement. If it's not structured correctly and designed around you and funded correctly, it's not going to work. I mean, there's a maximum amount that you can qualify in life insurance, depending on your, your assets, your income and your debt. There's a, there's right. a maximum amount. We try and coach our clients like max fund it. If you can mm -hmm. afford the premium max fund, here's why. And then show them all the benefits inside that and all the protection inside that plan that you just don't get anywhere else. I mean, if you sold your house today and you got a million dollars, you pay the capital gains tax, you got 800,000, you can go and put it in the market and buy just, you know, cryptocurrency and do whatever you want. You can't right. do that with life insurance. There's a certain parameters to protect your asset and your money. Right. And they want it to last forever. So max funding it, if you qualify, get as close to as possible. If a person can't do it from day one or year one or year two, we'll, we'll lay out a plan to get there in five, 10 year period. And there's a reason behind that because of all the benefits that come with it. Tax-free income stream, chronic critical illness, terminal illness, you know, loans to other people. Like you said, pulling money out to lend to someone else to make money. There's, just, there's a whole gamut of stuff that you can look into. Again, a case by case basis. We'll talk to everybody one-on-one. -on -one get to know what they're doing, where, they're, where everything is, and they open up and we can come back with a recommendation or two or sometimes three, but educate them enough so they make the choice which option is best for them. Excellent, excellent. All right, well, 
Mark, thank you so much for your time, for all of your knowledge and wisdom, uh, your years of experience. And um, again, guys, make sure you uh, submit to, to get a free consultation. And um, if you like the content, please share, please subscribe. And we look forward to uh, sharing more content like this with you. We're going to get talk more about life insurance and how you can use it in different unique scenarios. So make sure you uh, submit some comments and questions, and uh, we can have a follow up with Mark um, to to answer your questions. So thank you for um, for participating, Mark. Um, yeah. As always, everyone, uh, thanks for for watching the channel and um, make it a great life.